Life is too bloody expensive. It's getting ridiculous. I know people who work three jobs and they still have to go to food banks. Welcome back to London and to another cheap property film. Except it's London, so uh, they're not going to be that cheap. But the cheapest I could find. So I down here a couple of months ago and I did a film where I went exploring some of the cheapest houses brick and mortar terraced houses that are for sale in 2023 and it was mega interesting um, it was a lot of fun to make and it was also great to hear from you tell me stories about how you knew people or maybe it was even yourself commenting that had bought a house in the 70s for what 10 grand or 20 grand and then sold it recently for millions so I'm back only this time we're looking at flats the cheapest flats for sale in London in 2023 I think it's gonna be fun so yeah, first off, let me know. Do you live in a flat in London? Do you rent in a flat in London? How much are you paying? I'd love to hear from you. So yeah, I've got quite a variety of viewings booked in today, going from just the cheapest in general, the cheapest I could find in general in London, all the way to like uh, the cheapest in specific areas, such as very central London. I'm also gonna be talking about housing in general in this film, not just in London, but all around the country really, in the United Kingdom and issues that we're currently facing. Anyway, let's crack on because I've got eight flats to view, not much time and London's a big place so I'm going to be running all over the place. So let's, yeah, let's crack on, let's go see the first flat. Right, so I'm here at the first flat, I think it's a ground floor flat, it's this one here. So that's your building. So I'm actually a bit early, I've got a bit of time to kill before the viewing. But it's interesting because I'm also viewing today leasehold flats. So a lot of these flats you don't own outright, you only own them for a certain amount of years. And this one is on a lease for 125 years. So you'll only own it for 125 years. Some of them I'm viewing today I think I've got like 999 year leases. But I think the worst one that I've viewed today, I can't remember which one it is, but I think it's 86 years. So you'll only own it for 86 years, which is just crazy, especially in London, you think that inheritance of passing on a house to someone is so vital if you want to live in this city. And you only own it for 86 years. When you're dead, it's gone. It's not yours anymore. So this is the listing online for this flat. As you can see, it's on for that £285,000 guide price, going to auction on the 3rd. Now, this is the floor plan, so it's showing that you've got a lounge, a bedroom, a joint kitchen diner, and there is a garden at this place. Now, this is on a new 125-year lease, so that's how long you'll own it for. So let's get inside and look round. So here is the flat. You come in through a door that's on the ground floor of the house, then you come into here, there's a corridor going down which was pretty grotty, there was damp on the walls, a lot of it was just crumbling in this kind of shape like this. And the first room that I checked out was the bathroom. Now on first inspection, I thought, oh, this actually looks all right. Then the more I started to look around, the more I noticed things that would just need a lot of work doing to it. To be honest, there was a lot of damp. You just want to redo this whole room. So into the kitchen now, and look at that. That is a 285,000 pound kitchen for you right there. Wow cabinets just falling off I'd get rid of all of them behind there needs loads of work near the boiler all this tiling needs redoing it's funny in all my property tours I don't think I've ever seen a nice kitchen and this is certainly near the bottom underneath this weird kitchen table thing all needs redoing down there then looking up at the ceiling and you can see there's damp on there there's a big crack there let me know if you're someone who understands how much things cost to redo what would that room cost you to do up or the house in general then came out into the garden and there's a bit on the step there that needs redoing, but the place has a garden, which is obviously a massive selling point and gonna be adding loads of money to that figure, that 285,000 pound figure. Actually an all right size garden. Back into the house, just more little bits in the kitchen there, mold on the ceiling. And then we are through to the bedroom. So I guess you could have either room downstairs as your bedroom, but it's probably nicer to be looking out onto your back garden than the front road. Bit of damp on the ceiling, that's your view there to your garden. All right size room to be fair, it just needs a bit of work doing to it. You've got a little storage cupboard down here as well, which is very grotty. And again, just stuff like this around the house, just really cracked lights. And then this is into your living room. 
the final room in the house. The floorboards were really soft there. The walls down here were a total mess. It felt like no one had been in here for a very, very long time. And looking at the walls here, there were these streaky paint lines coming down that felt like they'd been from a leak. So I don't know how much damage that's done to the wall behind. And then just more black mold down here and crumbling walls. You're just dealing with that all around the house, really. £285,000 and it needs a lot of work doing. So there we go, flat number one, viewed. What did you think of it? It was, um, yeah, it wasn't great, was it? Very shabby, everything needed updating. I guess the benefit of that place is it had a garden and that's just gonna be a massive selling point in London, isn't it? Again, I've not figured it out yet, I should, I'll look into it. How much does a garden add to a property's value in London? But yeah, just felt dingy, small, kitchen was awful. Anyhow, on to the next, let's go, I've got about, 40 minutes to get to the next one, so let's roll. Oh yeah, the auction as well for that one. I think he's on the 3rd of August. So I won't edit this film until after the 3rd, so I'll be able to put in what it sold for as well. So hopefully you'll see that now as well. So this is Homerton, which is just near Hackney. That was the place that I knew of that it was near. And we're going to view the second flat today. But just before I do it, I thought I'd just tell you a little bit of a history of flats. So moving into the 1990s, in 1995, the average price for a flat in London was £68,000. Then in 2005, it was £208,000. Then in 2015, it was £363,000, the average for a flat in London. And then in 2023, it's £439,000 for the average flat price. So the cheapest area to buy a flat in London is Barking and Dagenham, where the average price is £250,000 currently. And the most expensive place to buy a flat in London is Kensington and Chelsea, where the average flat price is £1.2 million. So yeah, a lot of money. So the flat we're about to view is in that block up there. I think it's on for £200,000. Cash buyers only, they said. So obviously I'm a cash buyer today. But yeah, let's go in and have a look around, see what it's like. So this is the listing for this property. It's £200,000, cash buyers only. Here's the floor plan. Look at how small that is. And this is the one. This is the one with only 86 years left on the lease. So unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to show you the footage from this flat as there was a fella living there when I got there with all his stuff. And my rule for the channel is I will only film in vacant properties. But this is the listing online. So this is the living room. And as you can see, that it's really outdated. And from walking around, from what I saw, the whole flat needed a lot more work doing to it than these photos show. So this was the kitchen. And as you can see, again, needs totally updating. Again, the walls were crumbling in this room. So the pictures are way better than it actually was. Always go check places out. Now there was a balcony on the other side of that room, which I couldn't actually get to because the flat was really full of stuff. But there you go, it'll be something like that, a balcony like that. Here's the floor plan as well. Again, you can see it is a really small flat. The photos actually kind of make it feel a little bit bigger than it is, but it is a really small flat. So with a lot of these flats as well, it's not just the flat that you're paying for, you pay up front for that. But you've also got service charges. So this one here is £1,200 a year and £9 ground rent. So that's an extra cost as well you've got to think of with flats. So yeah, £200,000 for that place. And it was really hard to even gauge what it looked like because it was so messy in there, so much stuff. Yeah, that was, uh, that was, that was pretty shocking for £200,000. So the reason why that place was cash buyers only, this is mad, the estate agent was telling me outside, is because after Grenfell, the Grenfell Tower disaster when that burned down, I covered that in the last video actually, so banks aren't giving out mortgages on places that have unregulated cladding, they're not willing to be associated with places like this. So that block of flats there either doesn't have regulated cladding or isn't willing to get the correct forms which would then mean that banks would be willing to give out mortgages which is just absolutely insane. So yeah, essentially only cash buyers because it's unsafe to live and they're not willing to make it safe to live. So you're not gonna get a mortgage, you have to buy cash. That is crazy. How ridiculous property prices are in London. It's almost impossible for a nurse or a junior doctor or whatever to buy a place, to even think about buying a place. They're paying university debts, 
it's priced out of existence. The gentrification of Brixton, of Hackney, the gentrification, it makes things ridiculous. All the arches under Brixton Station, which were all little businesses, are never even placed by Costa and all the big chains, because they can afford to pay the rent. That's trebled. Mm. What? So I'm currently in Hyde Park. And you've got like Notting Hill over there where I'm seeing the next flat. And this is one of them where it's the, it's not the cheapest I could find in London, but it's the cheapest I could find in certain areas. So the flats around here are absolutely crazy in price. And the big houses, like, I'll just show you what's over there. So this right here is, is really wealthy London. It really is. So we'll go see this flat that's on for £700,000 and it doesn't look like what you'd expect from a £700,000 flat anyway. So it'll be interesting to go check out. So we've got a bit of time before the viewing. I said I was going to talk about renters as well in London. So I'm looking at flats to buy. However, I did want to mention what's going on with renters at the moment. So a HMO, which is a home in multiple occupation, is a house where there's three or more people living there, not from the same family who share a bathroom they share a living room it's your standard sort of rental that you live in when you go to a city i've lived in them before where you're with people you don't really know yeah so with these places you're going to be sharing a bathroom you're going to be sharing a kitchen you're literally sharing all the facilities so it, it needs to be fit for purpose for multiple people now you need a license to do this currently there are about eighteen thousand properties that have this license However, it's been estimated that there are around 154,000 properties rented out without HMO licenses. 154,000. And you wonder why the conditions of flats aren't great. That many people are just going, ah, oh, we'll just do it anyway without a license. And that's why the renting situation is crazy and people are living in unfit conditions. So we're near this flat now anyway, in Notting Hill, Hugh Grantville. Very, very wealthy around here. I've seen a lot of people wearing gilets. So let's go check it out, and then we'll have a chat. So here is the listing for this property. And as you can see, there's that price tag, £700,000. So it ain't cheap, but it's the cheapest in this area. Now there's the floor plan. It's not big at all. It's really not big. And what is the lease on this? Oh yeah, we've got a 981 year lease remaining. So here we go, let's have a look around. So into the living room, I guess you'd call it, or maybe you'd have it as the bedroom. I'm not really sure, but yeah, the walls are all fine. Nothing really needs doing to it. The carpet's fine. Is it a £700,000 living room? I'm not sure. You can, you can make that call. Then we are into the bathroom, and well, yeah, it's a bathroom. It's got a toilet, it's got a sink, it's got a bath, it's got a shower. It's very basic, but it is fine, I guess. I wanted to make sure that this light worked for £700,000, and it does. There we go, money well spent. Then we're through to the kitchen, and as you can see, when you're spending nearly a million pounds on a property, you just want the kitchen to be of the highest spec like this. But really, I mean, it's fine. Nothing really needs doing. It needs updating. What I did find funny was there was a note on the boiler which was saying, oh, there's a problem. You need to do this. I thought that was funny for £700,000. A little bit of a cupboard was broken here, so there is stuff that needs fixing. But really, it's just a fine little kitchen. And then down to the final room, which would be a bedroom. And it was a decent size, but once you've got that price tag in your head, everything's just a disappointment, really. This room isn't going to impress you unless you're minted. There was a problem with the carpet down here. You probably want new carpets. And also, there was this outside area which you could not access. And then just a little storage area, which the estate agent was so buzzing to show me. He was like, how great is this space? So there we go. What did you think of that place? the £700,000 flat, and let's face it, it was a it was a one-bed flat, a one-bed ground floor flat with a tiny, outdated kitchen, needed work doing to it. But yeah, 700 grand, that's location, 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 that isn't it, because it's right in the centre of wealthy London. 700 grand for that. So I was actually gonna move away from this area now and go find another really, really cheap one, but I've actually just found another house that's uh, for sale in this area. And it's on for, let me just check what it's on for. Yeah, so this one's on for £350,000. Uh, it's a flat just near where we were. This is called uh, Bayswater. So it's just off Hyde Park again. And it's got a 189 year lease. 
and there's not many pictures, but for £350,000, the floor plan looks tiny. So I am buzzing to go and check it out and see what it's like for £350,000. What will £350,000 get you in wealthy London? It can't be much. So since I've been down here, I've seen a lot of homeless people and London has a real problem with homeless people. I mean, that's what happens when you charge £700,000 for a one bed flat. So council tax data from 2021 in London shows that 2.4% of property, residential property, so homes, flats, 2.4% was left vacant. No one was living there. No one was registered living there. They were just empty, 2.4%. That number equates to 87,000 homes. 87,000 homes were just completely empty in London. And we've got a housing shortage, right? In 2022, over 8,300 people were seen sleeping rough on the streets of London. 5,000 of those were seen homeless for the first time. So a big reason for this is the sudden and quick end of private rented tenancies. Now during the pandemic, landlords were banned from doing this. There was a ban put on landlords just being able to kick people out whenever they wanted. Now that stopped. So in 2022, again, landlords were able to just, if they wanted to get rid of someone, they could, which led to a massive spike in people sleeping rough in London. So in 2022, there were 56,000 homeless households living in London, living in temporary accommodation sorted by London boroughs. 56,000 homeless households. Of that, there were 76,000 children who were technically homeless, having to be housed in London because there's a housing shortage. Let me remind you of that figure from before. There was 87,000 empty properties left completely empty in London. That is the absolute insanity of it, isn't it? You've got all these people homeless, children homeless. We've got nowhere to put them, but we do have all these empty houses which are just left there. Right, anyhow, the viewing for this 350,000 pound flat in wealthy London is just now. So let's go have a look at this. It's just up here. So I think it's in there. So let's go have a look. So here's the listing for this property. And as you can see, there's the £350,000 price tag and there's the tiny floor plan. I was so buzzing to check this place out because I just knew it was going to be a disappointment. And the lease on this, so it is a 189-year lease from 25th of December 1983. So that's minus 40 years. So it's 149 years you've got. That is what you get this flat for. And coming in, I was right. It was such a disappointment in here. This is your living room, which is tiny. And it is also such a mess. Just walking around everywhere I looked, there were bits trashed. The walls were wrecked. The ceiling was wrecked. There was damp everywhere. There was just so much stuff that needed doing to this flat. And it's a small flat. How does it get like this? It feels like no one has been in here for ages. And let me just remind you, this place is on for £350,000. All these windows as well. They're cracked. They're single glazed. So all that's going to have to be replaced. £350,000. Just let that sink in. Could you imagine living here? And this is just the living room. I haven't even shown you the rest of the place, which is even worse. So this is a little cupboard that's covered in mould. But let's go look at the rest of the house. So coming through here, and this is the bedroom. This is the bedroom. And I kid you not, this room would not fit a double bed in it positioned any angle. It was so small. You would have to get some small, specially designed bed to fit in this room as it was tiny. Again, just grubby all over, single glazed windows, all them would want replacing. I can't believe how small this place is and I can't believe the price. Then coming into the bathroom and I was hoping that maybe this would be the worst room in the flat. However, we've not seen the kitchen yet. I'll save the kitchen for last because that's really bad. But yeah, this is the bathroom. It's grotty, it's gross, it's smell weird. It looks like it hasn't been cleaned in years. Literally everywhere I looked in this room, there was just stuff that I was like, what is that? Why is that there? How hard is it to clean a mess up like that before you're trying to sell a flat for £350,000? 
Oh my God. And behind the bath here as well, it was like they'd sellotaped something back together, which I'm pretty sure isn't the correct way of doing repairs in a bathroom, but that's what they've gone for. Now here's the kitchen. And as you can see from first appearances, it's not good. It's not good at all. So firstly, it's tiny. It is absolutely tiny. The smallest kitchen I've viewed whilst being down in London. And secondly, it is just disgusting in here. It stank everywhere was insanely messy and it's just the cheek of it isn't it to put a house on the market in this condition this unclean and 350,000 pounds do you want it or not I don't care that I've not cleaned it and the bad thing is it'll probably sell and it'll probably sell for more than 350,000 pounds that's just a little outdoor bit there and then this is just another view of the kitchen here and when you look at it from this angle you just see how small that place is oh my god so what are your options if you're renting in London. You either live in one of these houses with loads of people living together, that's probably not going to be that great and it's still going to be expensive if you want to live with other people that is, or you try and live on your own. You try and find a place, one little bed studio where it's just yours. Now I'm not viewing any places today for renting but I did come across this place, it's called Enclave Gardens. Let me just get that right. Yeah it's called Enclave Gardens. And it's a, it's a 50 story building and it has 817 studio flats in it. And they charge from about 1500 to two grand, I think. And uh, yeah, hopefully I'll put some pictures on of what it looks like. But yeah, it's got all these quotes on it that say things like thoughtfully designed and there's loads of pictures of happy people. It's ridiculous. And they're just tiny little studios, like halls of residence, like when you were at uni and you lived in a little student flat. So in 2022, in August, there were 107,000 people looking for a room on spareroom.com, a place where you can search for rooms. 107,000. There were only 15,000 rooms available. That's how crazy the supply and demand is. So yeah, we've just got to the next flat that we're viewing, which is in Kilburn, North West London. So here we go. Here's the listing. £290,000 for this. It's a first floor flat and it will be held on a 990 year lease upon completion. So let's go have a look. So you come upstairs and I got a bad omen coming into this place already because I came over here and I was like, what is that down there? Picked it up. It's a cross, Jesus on the cross, on a satanic star. I was thinking, what has been going on in this place? Anyhow, looking around the rest of the flat, total mess. There was a guy who was walking around this flat as well as me and he was saying that he's a plasterer, a builder, can do everything himself. And he was just telling me everything that needed doing. And he was tapping the walls and saying how this bit is completely ruined on the inside. So you'd have to redo all that. It was really interesting to get that perspective. But yeah, he was saying that everything in this flat would just need completely gutting out and redoing. Then you come down here to the room on the right, which I guess would be a bedroom. And from the outside, you can see it needs a lot of work. And then when you're in there, you just dealt with more stuff that needs sorting out. I saw something on the wall. I was like, what's that? Oh, it's just Moldy Jesus. How are you doing, Moldy Jesus? There was a load of mold as well, just surrounding Christ the Redeemer. And the whole room itself was just completely trashed. You just need to gut it completely. Like the guy said who was walking around. He even said that he was like, I can do a lot of these skills, but realistically, you'd need a whole team in working on a place like this. I then made my way down the hallway to the kitchen. Now, the hallway itself needed completely sorting out. But yeah, this is the kitchen on the end. And as you can see, it would just need totally gutting, stripping back and then redoing. But the kitchen itself was really dirty, really needed to clean and I know I'm saying oh it would need gutting so what does it matter but the person selling the place come on at least go to a little bit of effort to make it look livable and nice it was so gross this is your bathroom here really really basic few cracks in the wallpaper there mess on the floor down here and I know that this is the cosmetic stuff this is the easy stuff to fix but you just immediately put off when you walk into places and they just look like this it's just not a fun experience at all unless you're me and you like looking around cheap property but yeah what did you think of that one right I got a bit of a stomp on now because I got to get across to uh, South Tottenham for this next one so let's go so I'm not a big fan of landlords I personally feel that nobody needs to own more than one property. We're constantly told in this country that we have a housing crisis. Now I travel all around the country exploring loads of different places and all I see is an abundance of empty houses. Like I said with London as well before, 87,000 empty properties left empty. So we do have a housing problem. It's not a shortage. The problem is that some people own most of the properties. If you are a landlord, 
be a sound landlord. Be a sound landlord who cares about the tenants, really looks after them, doesn't inflate rents just because you can. I've rented all my life and rarely have I had a really sound landlord. In fact, every time I've ever been to rent a place and I've turned up to view it and it's it's not clean and I've said, yeah, I'm really interested, but one thing, can you just make sure it's clean by the time I move in? And then you turn up on moving in day and it's not been cleaned at all and you go, you didn't clean it and they go, well, what are you gonna do? It happens all the time. Also, if you're a tenant in a place, be a sound tenant, but the tenants don't hold all the power, do they? It's the landlords. So I've just got to the next viewing, which is in South Tottenham. Uh, got about 15 minutes before the viewing, but it'll be interesting to see. I think it's another ground floor flat. But what's really scary is not just your landlord who owns a few properties, I don't know, one, two, maybe more, but a small portfolio. But what's really scary is the big corporate landlords because they have arrived and this is really, really scary. So in the UK, the biggest corporate landlord is Granger PLC. They have about 10,000 properties in their portfolio. But you've got Lloyd's TSB who are about to take the top spot because they're buying slash building 50,000 homes around the UK. You've got John Lewis doing the same, Goldman Sachs. The insurance company Legal and General have just put two billion pounds towards building new homes. But what's really scary about all these big corporations that are doing, that are doing this, they're not building these houses to sell, they're building them to rent. It's this build to rent plan for all of them. So it's their solution, they're saying, to the property crisis. They're gonna build all these homes, build to rent. That's what they're gonna do. But why do these corporate gods want to control where we live like that? Why do these giants of industry want to start doing this build to rent thing? And this is my theory. So mortgages are dangerous. Overinflated house prices lead to what happened in 2008 with the market crash, lending too much on mortgages. That's what happened. I think that banks know this. They know that the overinflated house prices is a bubble and it will burst at some point. So what do you do to avoid that? So I think what the banks are doing is they're going, you know what, let's move away from mortgages. Mortgages are risky. Us lending you some money to buy a house that we'll own for a bit really and then you'll own it eventually. You know what, that's not good. We know that can go wrong. So instead, let's just buy all of the houses, just buy as much as we can and just say, you want this house? Now, we can't sell it to you, we can't give you a mortgage on that, don't worry about that, but what we can do is just rent it to you. So with this solution to their problem as well, what they can do is they can still keep their insanely overinflated house prices because they're not trying to sell it. They're not saying, oh yeah, you, you can buy this. No, no, you can't buy it, you can just rent it. So they can still keep the prices really, really high, charge you insane rent and just strip even more possibility of you owning your own home. So here's the listing for this property, £170,000. Here's the floor plan. It might be the biggest floor plan of a flat we've seen. And what is the lease? The lease is a new 125-year lease. So let's get inside. So you come in and immediately you can tell that this place is not in a good way at all. Reflected in the price, I think it's the cheapest we've seen today. My theory on this place is that someone's bought it, started to do all the renovation work and just got fed up, can't be bothered and has just chucked it back on auction. You can just see it's a total mess. There's two rooms down this end, so this is one of them. As you can see, yeah, just everything needs sorting in there really. Then you go through to the other room, which is just as bad really. Now some of the plaster work, on some of the walls seemed all right, that looked kind of fresh, but I guess, say if this flat has been left for three years or something with bits completely undone, I guess once that moisture's in, that'll start to affect the plaster that has been done. So that might need redoing and the windows, yeah, just need totally sorting. Then you come down here through the corridor to this room, which would be your bathroom. I realized because there was all these different pipes coming in and out and there was a bit on the floor, which I couldn't work out what it was, but I realized it would have been for the toilet. But yeah, this room would need completely sorting, but at least it's a complete bare canvas. You know where you stand with this room. Then you're down to the kitchen area, and as you can see down there, there is a garden, which we'll check out as well. But again, just a complete blank canvas in here. You'd need to do a lot of work structurally. There's loads of bits that didn't seem safe. There was some weird stuff on the ceiling there. And again, coming over here, just some more serious structure work that would need redoing. Now, I don't know how serious that is. I don't know what that had cost, the actual damage there, but it doesn't look good, does it? Here's a quick tour of all the black mold that's growing all over the ceiling here, all around the door here that leads out onto the back garden, which is actually a pretty decent size, as I said, that really affects the property price. 
Life is too good expensive, it's getting ridiculous. I know people who work three jobs and they still have to go to food banks. Life has become intolerable for the working man. So I've just got to Holloway Road, which wasn't far from Tottenham at all actually. And I'm going to view a really, really small studio flat that's on for 175,000 I think. So this is gonna be really interesting. So here's the listing online for this flat. As you can see, it's on for 185,000 pounds. Definitely the smallest flat that we're gonna view whilst being down. Let's have a quick look at the lease. What have we got? Oh, it's got a brand new 125 year lease, cash buyers only. And I like this, it says, bright and airy. So when I got there, there was a girl living in the flat with all her stuff. I only film vacant properties. So I'll just have to show you the listings online. But look at this place. It's a bed in a room with a fridge and a tiny little kitchen and then a bathroom here. And that is it. That is all you get in this place. It is insanely small. I can't believe it. Let's look at the floor plan again because it is just so, so small. When you look at it, you see it's about four meters by three and a half meters. That's your life living in that. That's it. But I mean, what do you expect from a city that is selling car parking spots for £95,000? A place to park your car. You can't expect much from a flat, can you? So there we go, that was the last flat. What did you think of that place? Uh, I mean, it was terrible, wasn't it? hundred and I think 185,000 or 175,000 for that room. It was a room and, and that's where you live. That is your home. That's insane. Right, anyway, I'm at King's Cross Station now. That's the end of the video, really. No more viewings. I just thought I'd give some final notes on, on what we've seen as it's been pretty crazy. The average deposit alone for a house, sorry, no, for a property in London is £148,000. That's the average deposit. I'm 30 and I have never even considered the possibility of buying a house. I'm just like, it's just so off the radar for me. And then you hear that in London, you'd need £148,000 for the average deposit just makes you think, I I'm struggling up north to be able to buy a house. I can't do that. How are people doing it in London? There was the affordable housing scheme, affordable rent scheme set up by the coalition government and it was, it was continued by the current mayor, I think, and that was put at £175 a week for affordable rent. That's £700 a month. That's not affordable. That's crazy. Have you worked a minimum wage job full time? You don't earn much money after working 40 hours. How are you then supposed to pay 700 pounds? It's crazy, it really is crazy. So property prices in London are way too high, ludicrously high, we all know that. So you're either pushed to rent in somewhere that's not safe, not regulated, or you try and find a place on your own and you pay a lot more money, or you're fortunate enough to be able to buy a property, maybe you've inherited a property. But these property prices, it's just ridiculous, isn't it? It's a, it's a self-inflated image of, of London's economy. And how long will it go on for? How long when people are living in, in flats where your bed is next to your fridge, how long does this go on for? Or at what point did we just go, this is fine, this is fine to do that. At some point, this housing bubble is going to burst. At some point, people are gonna realize this is not okay. Or the alternative is, all the corporate landlords come, buy everything, and then everyone's screwed. Thank you for watching. Oh, I've got one more little thing for you. So I did view one more property whilst I was in London, and it was a three million pound flat in central London. I thought this would be nice. It's, uh, it's not cheap, but it's in central London. So I'll leave this footage with you now. And yeah, well, it's, it's disappointing. Look at what three million pounds can get you elsewhere in the country. Thank you for watching. Nice one. So here's the listing for the three million pound flat. You've got the London Eye in the background. You've got 991 years left on the lease. Let's go in and have a look round. So you come in and you've got this kitchen living room combined with a balcony. And there's the three million pound view. That's why it's expensive because of where it is. Because let's face it, that kitchen ain't a three million pound kitchen, is it? Here's a room where I guess you could just store all your cash. You've got one bathroom here, a bedroom here. Wait until I show you this view. The view is just spectacular. Look at this. It's offices, lovely offices. You'd think when designing a three million pound flat, they wouldn't make it with doors that open onto each other. It makes it very hard to get around. 
So here is the other bathroom. So it's two bed, two bathroom. Let's check out the other bedroom. There you go. Wow, what a lovely bedroom. And let's just take one more look at that view. There it is. Every single day you get to look at that. Every day, a giant Ferris wheel. Three million quid. So let's just quickly compare what three million pounds can get you up north. This gaffer, three million quid, comes with its own lake. That's pretty nice. What we've got here, Borough Bridge Hall. Jeez, look at that. Three million quid. What else can we find? Let's have a little scroll down. What did that say? Castle. I saw castle. Castle Eden. A whole castle. Three million quid. County Durham. Look at this place. What would you rather, this or the London Eye? Wow.